This is an interesting case which was uh, referred to me for a second opinion. 11 year old girl who had a history of uh, trauma several years ago followed by intermittent episodes of swelling in the maxillary anterior area. So when she came to me, this, is, uh, this was her clinical condition. She had a very large lesion uh, extending all the way from the canine on one side to the canine on the other side. And uh, you can see both the central incisors had open apices and very large lesion. CBCT uh, shows you the extent of the lesion involving almost the entire maxillary anterior area. Because she had already been to several practitioners before coming to me, uh, she had quite a few treatment plans with her. And when I glanced through these treatment plans, almost all of them were the same. They all suggested root canals in all the six anterior teeth, RCT in all the six anterior teeth, followed by surgery um, to get rid of the lesion. Now, this is a very radical uh, uh, procedure in my opinion especially in an 11 year old child uh, and the reason uh, why a lot of people opt for this is because they um, they tend to see these large lesions as a surgical problem rather than an endodontic problem so um, the first thing we do when we get a case like this is we check the vitality of all the six uh, all the involved teeth and uh, this is what, what I did and when I did a vitality I found that the, the lateral and canine on both sides um, was actually vital so the only teeth that were non-vital or non-responsive to heat or cold was uh, the central incisors. So we decided to treat only the central incisors and not do anything about the lateral and canine for now. So um, I decided to access both these teeth and then do multiple rounds of calcium hydroxide, uh, look for some sign of the lesion to heal and um, then look at obturating uh, both these central incisors either with MTA or if we induced enough apexification then we would look at uh, uh, obturating with uh, gutta perka. So this is what I did. I started the case in September 2012. I, uh, I, we went through multiple rounds of calcium hydroxide and followed this case all the way up to March 2015. So if you look at this case in March 2015, several uh, months after we started the initial treatment, uh, we can see that the lesions healed almost completely and uh, we also noticed there's a bit of a barrier formation both on the left and right central incisors. Uh, on the right central incisor you can see there's evidence of barrier formation here whereas on the left central incisor the barrier seems to be somewhere here. So uh, we decided to go back in there um, and check the clinical scenario so I removed the, I started with the the right central incisor, I removed the calcium hydroxide and then uh, I inserted a gutta perka cone and you can see that the, uh, I could see that the gutta perka cone had a solid resistance in this area. So when I viewed the apical portion where the gutta perka was coming to a hard resistance, uh, I could see evidence of a barrier formation there but the barrier was not uniform. In one part of the barrier I could see a bit of bleeding. Um, so I decided uh, Usually if I, if I see a complete barrier here, then I would just obturate with the gutta perka from an obturator gun. But because I could see that in one part of the wall, there was a, a lack of continuity, I decided to place MTA there. So this is what I did. I put MTA and uh, when I took this radiograph, I could see a bit of uh, radiolucency here. So I tried to push MTA in this part, but it, would, it just wouldn't go there. So what appears as a radiolucent area in the, in the, in the x-ray is actually um, um, quite a hard barrier. So I put MTA against um, the apical portion there, about three to four millimeters of, of MTA. Uh, I didn't want to take a chance and uh, seal this coronal portion immediately. I placed a bit of cotton there and um, sealed this uh, with a temporary filling so that I could go back in there, check if the MTA is hardened a few days later and then do the coronal buildup. So that's what I did on the in the in the right central incisor. And then once I was done with that, I, I moved on to the left central incisor. I removed all the calcium hydroxide that we had placed there. And I uh, found that in this tooth, the resistance was felt somewhere in this area. So I viewed that area under the microscope. And what I found in this case was there was a uniform barrier um, throughout. There was no, no lack of um, uh, continuity anywhere. Um, you can see here, the barrier is actually very continuous with the adjacent wall. So um, once I knew that the barrier was continuous, I, I decided to fill this with uh, with Optura, op, from with Karaperka from the Optura gun rather than MTA. So this is what I did. I extruded Karaperka um, 
and although it looks as though it's overextended, it's, it actually isn't it, this, because the barrier is somewhere here. So I extruded gutta perka about five millimeters, five to six millimeters, and then restored the coronal portion with a fiberglass post, a very large fiberglass post inverted uh, to give some additional strength because there's quite a bit of coronal weakening. Um, that's what I did in that tooth. And as far as the other tooth is concerned, I, I went back in there about four or five days later and then removed the cotton pellet, check and to see that the MTS was really hard, rock hard. And then I uh, placed the fiberglass post uh, to give some additional coronal strength in that tooth as well. So the, so the obturation, post obturation radiograph looks, looks a bit odd because it looks short in this tooth, but it actually isn't short because that's where the barrier is. Whereas on the other tooth, it looks long, but it actually isn't long because there is a solid barrier there as well. So this is how we started and this is how we ended several uh, months later. This is the CBCT. Uh, you can see how we started with a very wide open apex and then this is how we ended with a, with a really solid barrier and also the entire lesion healing completely, bone being formed here. Uh, what's also interesting you can see is that um, although in the radiograph this uh, obturation looks short, you can see in the CBCT there is a solid barrier formed in this tooth and in the other tooth in the radiograph it appears beyond the apex but it's actually at the apex you can see the barrier formation here what's also interesting to note is there's a there's something like a periodontal ligament which is formed around the barrier both in this tooth as well as this tooth so yes uh, pretty interesting case